Is Genshin Impact becoming free-to-play unfriendly? Let's take a deeper look into this. I'll be going over what makes a game free-to-play unfriendly, whether Genshin Impact is pay-to-win in the first place, and then talk about some positive and negative aspects of the game from a free-to-play perspective. Then I'll give my thoughts on if I think the game is heading in this direction or not. So what makes a game free-to-play unfriendly? A game is free-to-play unfriendly when you essentially feel the need to spend money to keep up with the pace of the game. In other words, you need to spend money to ensure that you can win. This is pretty much what pay-to-win means, as the name implies. Mona and Zhongli can never be winners, I guess. And Venti too. Venti is broke. With this in mind, is Genshin Impact pay-to-win? I personally don't think it is, because you don't ever need to spend money to clear content in this game. Hoyaverse has ensured that you can complete all content in Genshin without ever having to spend money. For example, they give you one of each character for all elements except Geo to do puzzles. I, I don't know, they just don't like Geo or something. But you do get Geo Traveler, so it is what it is. In terms of story, exploration, and quests, you don't ever need to spend money to complete them. Spending money obviously makes it easier, but it is by no means impossible by being free to play. Now for you sweaty tryhards, you might be wondering about Spiral Abyss. I will talk about that in a little bit. Now there are some things that are still worth mentioning. First, here are the positive aspects for free-to-play accounts in Genshin. So recently, Hoyaverse has made a change in 3.5 where you can get a free intertwined fate when completing an Archon Quest chapter. What a miracle. As of 3.6, you can get up to 22 free intertwined fates just by doing the Archon Quests. These fates will continue to be given for free when future Archon Quests are introduced as well. Every intertwined fate for a free-to-play account is always helpful. Then you have offering systems that are continuously being added into the game. You have the Frostbearing Tree from Dragonspine, Inazuma Sakura Tree, the Chasm Luminstone? Luminstone? Lumin I, I don't know what it's called. And then the Sumeru Tree of Dreams, which looks like a giant onion. And also the new pool in the desert area in 3.6. These rewards add up and allow you to save up for a character you want to pull for. This is a nice thing they included in the game, just like Amber's kit design. Hoyverse also occasionally pushes their generous button and hands out free 4-star characters and weapons through events. Receiving a 4-star for free is always nice as you don't have to spend any primo gems to acquire them. And as we know, every primo gem counts, regardless of if you're free to play or not. Now this last point is a bit biased, but I find being free to play in Genshin really fun. I don't find Genshin really that difficult, so having some challenge is always good. Not that there's anything wrong with spending money on this game, as I have done it myself, but I do find myself having a lot more fun when I don't one-shot everything in the overworld. This is my personal take on this particular point, so take it with a grain of salt. Moving on, here are some negative aspects of being free to play. Now being free to play isn't inherently an issue, but it still has its downsides, especially if you start the game later than before. What do I mean by this? Imagine for a moment that you start a new free-to-play account in 3.6. You'll have access to all the permanent content, but you won't ever get the Primo Gems from previous events and dailies. Not to mention that you also miss out on exclusive event weapons from the past. So if you compare a new account to an older one, obviously you will be missing out on being able to obtain as many characters and weapons, simply because the other account has been around for longer. The only way you can get a similar amount of characters and weapons is to either get extremely lucky or spend money, which both are pretty terrible options. Almost as terrible as all the war crimes Traveler has committed across the vat, but we'll save that for another conversation. Another negative aspect of being free to play is the Spiral Abyss. Now this one is a bit subjective because some people can clear the Spiral Abyss without using any 5 stars, and they could probably also do it while blindfolded because they're that much of a tryhard. But I would say that a big portion of the player base are casuals who don't really bother to learn the complex mechanics of combat in Genshin. Regardless of if you're a sweaty tryhard or a casual, being free to play limits your options in terms of building teams. You won't have access to that many characters and clearing the abyss will be a lot more difficult, especially if you aren't that knowledgeable on the combat mechanics in this game. Hoyverse has also introduced monsters and bosses that require you to use specific elements to counter them. The Dendro Hypostasis is a perfect example of this. It's a pretty weird design that the Dendro Cube requires you to bring Dendro even though it's immune to Dendro. I don't know. Not the best design, but it's certainly easier to deal with if you aren't free to play. 
because you have access to a lot more characters. And then obviously being free to play also means you are limited to the amount of wishes that you can acquire. Spend these fates wisely because obtaining new characters can take a long time, especially if you're free to play. Except for those random people that you see on Reddit or something who pull 10 5 stars within 50 pulls or something. I don't know. So with all that being said, is Genshin Impact becoming free to play unfriendly? Personally, I don't think it is, but there are some things to keep in mind. For example, the recent Spiral Abyss lineup in 3.6 has definitely been a lot more difficult if you don't have access to various amounts of characters. So in that regard, you could say that Genshin is becoming more free to play unfriendly. But if you exclude the Spiral Abyss, I think the game is still free to play friendly. As I mentioned earlier, you can still clear all the content in the game without ever spending any money. The Spiral Abyss is such a small portion of the game that I don't think it really matters. Small. Like Xiao's height. And while it certainly makes the game a lot easier for most people if they spend money, it's not necessary. In addition, you can also still acquire any character you want, as long as you save up for them. Genshin has a guarantee system built into their character banners, which is good for both free-to-play and people who spend money on the game. Now, we won't talk about the weapon banner because that thing is incredibly cursed. So while I do think Genshin is and will remain free-to-play friendly if you exclude the Abyss, I also think there is a possibility for it to become a bigger problem eventually if you get into Genshin later on. This is because you will have less access to characters making the game more difficult. Once again, this of course depends on the player, but assuming a casual player, they might not understand some mechanics of the game, making it more free to play unfriendly. Having access to more characters makes the game a lot easier, especially having 5 stars. Hoyverse is adding more permanent rewards, so hopefully this will mitigate the issue. So once again, I think Genshin is free to play friendly, with some outliers here and there. There's potential for it to be an issue later, but we'll have to wait and see if that actually happens. What do you think? Do you think Genshin is becoming more free to play unfriendly? Let me know in the comments. That'll be all for this one. Until next time.